Jesus. Father, we just give you praise. We we'll bless you tonight. We we'll worship you, eternal rock of ages. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. 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 We bless your name, eternal rock of ages. We worship you, omnipotent God. We glorify your name. You mortal and invisible God, we thank you for tonight. We worship and exalt your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. You mortal and invisible God, there is none like you, there is none to be compared unto you. Holy One of Jacob, we give you praise. We bless your name. Oh, be thou exalted, Lord. 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 Eternal Rock of Ages, be thou exalted, Lord. Oh, good evening. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, Brenda. Good evening, Jen. Oh, it's good to have you guys online again tonight. Uh, Brenda, did you get the handout uh, that I uh, emailed to you? I also sent you the previous ones, the one we did before now. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just bless your name. We'll just keep praying as we wait a few more minutes for people to come on. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. For the Lord, I just uh, pray for Brenda, and I pray for Jane, and I pray for Jody, and I just ask, oh God, that your blessings will just rest upon this precious soul. I pray, Father God, that your your Son of Righteousness will just uh, will shine upon them tonight. I pray, Lord, that you will meet them at the point of their need. I pray for uh, Elwood, the Belesnes, and I just ask, oh God, that you will just... Uh, so surround this one, so God, with your precious mercy and favor. We pray for a sudden visitation of the God kind for the family of God. Oh Lord, as we connect tonight, I pray, Lord, that everyone will have a divine connection with heaven. We pray, Lord, that there will be a supernatural manifestations of the grace and the blessings of God. We just thank you. We just uh, lift up Rick unto you also. We just pray and commit their business unto you. We commit their health unto you. We pray, Father God, for Vanessa and her family. We just cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we build a canopy of defense and protection all around these precious souls tonight, Lord, that the wind of disaster will not come near their dwelling in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that your holy name will be exalted in their lives. We we'll pray, Lord, that you will show yourself faithful on their behalf in Jesus' name. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Amen. All right. Good evening again. Uh, good evening, Vanessa, Jody, uh, Brenda, uh, Elwood and Lorraine, and Jan. Those I can see online. And Verna Sacred is online right now. Uh, Melody Livingstone is listening. And let's just quickly pray. Father, we just pray for Melody's mom right now in the hospital. We just uh, just cover her with your peace, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that your angels will just begin to comfort that woman right now. We know, Lord, that she is tired. And we pray, Father God, that her days, the last, her days on earth here, the last days, Lord, will be full of peace. We just pray that that pain, oh God, in her body will go in the name of Jesus. That she will spend her last days on earth here, not with stress, not in pain, not in sickness, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for Melody and her family, that you will just grant them peace that passeth every man's understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I just pray that you will just comfort anyone that is uh, that is dealing with any issue emotionally or physically here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, people of God, uh, it's good to have you all online and those I can see. Uh, tonight, we'll be going to the second, uh, the third part of uh, our study tonight on the... Uh, the nature of uh, of God, the divine nature of God that he has promised us that we become partakers of that divine nature. So tonight, as we go into the scriptures, I want us to, I want us to, uh, if you have your Bible, 
I want you to open with me to Second Peter again. And as we go through the steps together, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, I want us to read that together. And that way we'll be able to be in tune. Uh, we can be on the same page. And by the grace of God, I will give you time to open your Bible to Second Peter, uh, Second Peter chapter one, and Second uh, Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. From verse 1, I think I'll read. Simon Peter, a slave and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal privilege with ours, true righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By this he has given us a very great and precious promises so that through them we may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption in the world caused because of evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement or add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, endurance, and to endurance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly affection or kindness, and to brotherly kindness with love. Verse 8, if you, if, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election because if you do these things, you will never stumble. If we do these things, and this is what we need. And this is, I believe, that with what is happening again in the world, and we do studies like this so that we can speak to our present situation and the present circumstances in the world. Uh, the, the level of bitterness and anger in our world today is unprecedented, even among Christians. Right? You know, when Christians now are no longer working in love, we're working in, and a fear has created a lot of anxiety, and that anxiety is bringing us some ugly things in us that shouldn't be there. Right? And because we are not working in the divine nature of God, the nature of God that he wants, that like we spoke about, the last place we stopped last week was what? Is it being confirmed? That means to become one, to be in harmony with the Lord. That we become the reflection of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That when the world sees us, you know, like this old saying, what would Jesus do? You know, as a child of God, when the nature of, of God is in you, which is expected to be in us, we now begin to walk worthy of our calling, making our elections sure. He said, if we possess these qualities in an increasing measure, that means it's a daily work with God. We have to be conscious and deliberate, intentional about our work with God, about our faith. And the, the, the sad thing is that and I want to use this word, and to because of translation and accent, you know, there are two words that sound the same, work and work. There's one that is W-A-L-K. That is, the W-O-R-K is the doing. 
Now, our, our salvation, our relationship with God is not in our doing, it's in our being. You can be working for God and not walk with him. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, that God took him. Hebrews chapter 4. And the, the Bible said before his translation, he has this testimony that he what? He pleased God. Because when a man working speaks to our character, work speaks to our doing, our effort. But the work we're talking about here is the character of the Holy Spirit being made manifest in us. So the Bible says, Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. That before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So if my life is your life, is my life pleasing to God? And the only way my life can be pleasing to God is when I have that divine nature. So he said his divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. He said, why? So that we can participate in this divine nature through the knowledge of him. Knowledge. You see, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom simply means applied knowledge. So he says, in all your getting, get understanding. So a lot of us, oh, Brian is here. A happy birthday. Uh, today is uh, Brian uh, Father Gotti. I call him Reverend Father Gotti. Today is his birthday. So happy birthday to you. I'm Bob Bogado from Oates, and I can see our sister Lorna, the beautician, is here with us. Amen. And so for those of you who are joining us, we are going back to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. And uh, some of us have the handout already. Bob, did you get the handout that we emailed to you? So if you, do, if you need the handouts, just send me a message after this and I will email them to you tomorrow. So now the Bible says, make every effort to add to your faith. The faith we have, our first conversion, becoming a Christian, going to church, all that are wonderful. But if you go to church, if you have said, oh, I gave my life to Jesus today, and you are not changing, you are not being transformed. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed, be ye transformed. The transformation is what brings about the divine nature. You can be in church, you can have a title of a pastor, but yet you have not been transformed. The transformation is the character build-up. This is what the world is looking for. The reason why there's so much bitterness and anger that even the church has no solution is because many of us are in the church, but we have not yet been transformed. Many of us have the title of a pastor, but we have not yet been transformed. We preach from the author. We can preach the word of God without knowing the God of the word. And in knowing him, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if we don't know him to the point where the word of God, Paul speaking to the church, he said what? Let this word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word to dwell in you means that the word is resident in you and you are now acting and living out the word. Like James says to us, do not be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Be working the walk, not just talking the talk. And that is what is going to change the world. That is what is going to bring about the revival that we've been praying for, that the Lord has promised us in this generation. It is a transformed life of a Christian that will bring about revival. So he said, make every effort now to add to your faith. The first thing, uh, we, we touched on it last week. I don't want to keep going back, uh, but we'll just keep going forward. And if you really want to catch up everything, try and listen to the 
uh, the two, two previous uh, lesson uh, study we did on this, uh, his divine nature. And that way you can catch up and you'll be in tune with what we're saying tonight. So the first thing he says to add, now the Holy Spirit is very precise and is very organized. God is a God of order. So he said, make every effort now to add to your faith. Now he said, now faith because it's a faith without works is dead. Now this is the works that the Holy Spirit, I believe, is directing us into. He said, the first thing you should do is goodness. What does the Holy Spirit mean by goodness in first, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5, I believe? Uh, verse 3, for his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Right? Verse 5. Verse 5 says, for this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. Goodness. What does it mean by goodness? That means to be decent in character, in conduct, to be morally upright, and to be honest in your dealing. It means to be a man or a woman of integrity. And integrity here means to be intentionally honest in your ways and in your dealing with your fellow man. And one strong mark of a good man, or the character here is, a, is that is a transformation in Christ Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit that we talked at the beginning. And how do we begin to see the goodness in me? One physical manifestations of the goodness of a man or a woman who has that quality, this divine nature, is in their conversation. Right? What is conversation? The Bible says, let your conversation be seasoned with salt. This is in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your conversation be seasoned with salt, um, always full of grace, so that you may be able to answer everyone. You know what salt is for? Salt, first, is for preservation. That means when I talk, you see all this racial tension that is in the world today. Now, for the church, the church is the voice that would change the narrative if they get that revelation. And for me, like I was saying, and now we are online now, so people get to hear you. And I, I, I say without any apology that if he has to take something like what happened in America a few weeks ago, for the church to realize that we have a situation like that, the question to you and me is that, have we been praying and listening to the Holy Spirit? Why does he have to take the word to bring our attention to a spiritual matter? Then there's something lacking somewhere. And if our conversation is seasoned with salt, then there, there will be no bitterness in my conversation. There will be no anger in my conversation. There will be no hatred in my conversation. There will be no discrimination in my conversation. There will be no, you understand what I'm saying? Because my conversation should be seasoned with salt. So when I speak to people, and the good thing about Jesus Christ is this. You remember the story of uh, the woman by the well. Let me give you a, 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 a picture of how to have a conversation seasoned with salt. Even when you're talking to somebody that you think is a sinner or does not believe like you believe or does not look like you. Now, this woman was a notorious woman in the community. Jesus being God and who is all, all knowing, what did he do? He knew the story of the woman. Now, he had a conversation with this woman who have had five husbands and who is now shacking up with another guy. Maybe he took that man was her friend's husband. Maybe, who knows, right? So she was notorious. But when Jesus had a conversation with her, Jesus confronted her in love. Jesus told her she was even happy. He said, come and see the man who told me everything I have done. Now, many people have addressed her, that same shortcoming, and they've ended up fighting, right? Because a man who is good with the Holy Spirit, your presence does not condemn people. It convicts, right? Your presence, like I tell our church here in Grand Cash, 
I said, we, we don't, we create an atmosphere of conviction, not condemnation. So anybody can walk into Cornerstone in Grand Cash, no matter how bad they think they are, they will not feel condemned. They will feel the love of God. Why? Because our mission is not to condemn, but to create an atmosphere of conviction that will get the person thinking about themselves. And this is the goodness that the Bible is talking about. Say, add to your faith goodness. And the mark of goodness is in your conversation. The words. The Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. That you can meet somebody who is a prostitute, a drug addict, or a person who doesn't look like you, you don't like what they look like or what. But if you can have a goodly conversation, let me use the word, you may be able to convict them by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now will convict them of their wrong and they will change. This was what Jesus was like when he was walking upon the earth. And this is the divine nature that God is asking you and me to imbibe into ourselves so that we can walk the work as children of God. Is somebody hearing me here tonight? Am I talking too fast? Amen. Right, I'm getting excited, so. <laughs> Amen. And so this is what it means to be good. So he says, add to your faith goodness. So the question is, as a child of God, do you have that divine nature? It can people see you and say, oh, this is a good man. Does your word come with hatred, with bitterness and anger towards people? You see, you don't have to like everybody. But as a child of God, you are commanded to love everybody. And when you love, you love with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then because you're a good person, a child of God is supposed to be good. The Bible says God wants everyone to be saved. That is the goodness of God. <clears throat> Grace speaks to the goodness of God. God is gracious to us all because it's all good. See, and that nature of God is what is going to change the world. It is not in my, in my preaching if it's not seasoned with salt. Because salt preserves and salt what seasons. So when you are speaking to people, you are, you're going to be preserving them, rescuing them from the dominion of darkness and bringing them to the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And so in our thought, it's what informs what comes out of our mouth. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. All this discrimination and hate and all the isms that we have, tribalism and uh, racism, all the isms, religion also has their own isms. Uh, the Catholic and the Pentecostal, they don't see eye to eye. This one and that one don't see eye to eye because that every ism create a schism in us. But if our conversation, if we are good, we will learn how to have conversation with people we don't even agree with without going into violence and fight. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying in this last day. That we need to begin to imbibe the nature. You need to pray. That's why the Bible say, Paul uh, Peter said, make every effort. You see, that means God is not going to do that for me. You see, this, this is the secret. This is not just by praying and fasting and going for somebody to lay hand on you, pour your anointing oil. You must deliberately choose to walk for God. You see, for those of us who know who like to exercise the Lord. I think Sister Alona can bear me witness. She is a guru in that. If you keep sitting down and procrastinating and say, oh, I'm going to start working out tomorrow, doing that, it will never happen. You need to get up and move. And this is the thing. For you to have a good Christian life, you must stand up and begin to act upon what you read, what you hear from the Holy Spirit. And so it changes your conversation. And so the next thing, after being good, the Holy Spirit said, now, 
add to that goodness knowledge. Right? Knowledge. Knowledge. This is very, very important. Why is that important? Because you need to know, both spiritually and physically, how many times have we, let me say, let me come back to where we are today. A lot of people, we, you, you, we have prejudice. We prejudge people without knowing them. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> for those of us who know me, I like to use myself as an example now. I live in a town which is almost 95% white. Let me use the word. Let me be racial a little bit now. I've been here with my family for the last 12 years. A lot of people know me. They've come to know me. My church, our church, is 99% white. But we relate with each other because of knowledge. When they see me, I know that many people don't see my color. And for me, I don't know how to relate with people based on color anymore because of my orientation. I see the heart. So people, knowledge is, is very, very important. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. So we have George. Yes, you guys love me. They support me. And which is true. So we judge people based on lack of knowledge. So we see this person and say, oh, this person is bad because he looks like this. They are this way because they live in this kind of, uh, this part of town or because they come from so-so country and we have prejudice without knowledge. And so the Bible said, add to your goodness knowledge. Knowledge about the people around you first, knowledge about your environment and the culture, and above all, knowledge of the Lord God that you are dealing with, the God that you've come to serve. Do you know Jesus? What would Jesus do in certain situation? Are you acting like Jesus? Because knowledge simply means the condition of knowing something or someone with familiarity gained through association. When you relate with Jesus, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the only way we can gain true knowledge is by becoming familiar with that thing. If we are afraid of each other, there is no way of knowing each other. And now back to where we are today. If we allow the secular media to keep feeding us with all the lies and the garbage, we will never get to know each other. We will continue to be afraid of each other. I have never felt more free, more at home anywhere in the world like where I am right now in Grand Cash. Grand Cash is my home. Because of knowledge. People know me, I know them. Right? And then the same thing with Jesus. Do you know Jesus? A lot of people are afraid of God because they don't know him. <laughs> All they think about is that it's going to send them to hell for what they've done wrong. Uh, Jesus is punishing them. Uh, Jesus did not answer them because they were bad. And they equate their knowledge of their earthly father and relationship to God. And that broken, disjointed knowledge of God has put a gulf between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. So they don't have that strong relationship. Amen. That is true, Terry. Amen. And so this is what it's all about. That knowledge. We need to know Jesus. So the knowledge here, add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness knowledge. Because if you don't know him, you can't serve him well. If you don't know Jesus, you cannot worship him as he should be worshipped. If you don't know him, you will not reverence him the way he should be reverenced. If you don't know him, you will not believe all his promise. Let me give you another example about knowing. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that if I say, oh, if you say, Pastor John, please, uh, I need $10. And I say, oh, come to my house in the next 30 minutes, I'll give you. You will believe me. Because you know. 
that at least I, I can afford to give. You know that about me. You know that I have, I can give you $10. You will not have any fear about it because you know that, okay, this is a pastor. No matter how broke or poor he is, he can afford $10. You know that about me, <coughs> right? But if you say you are looking for $10,000 right now, oh, oh, I need $10,000 to pay up a debt. And I say, oh, come and I'll give it to you tomorrow. You will hesitate. Because you know that, uh, can this guy afford that? From what I know, I don't really know him to that extent. Is he that rich to give me $10,000? Right? So your belief and trust in people is informed by the depth and the level of your knowledge of them. Does that make sense? It's how deep you know me, you will trust me to the level to which you know me. And a lot of people, the reason why we don't trust God is because we don't know him deep enough to know that he is a covenant-keeping God and he's a promise keeper. Right? A lot of people have not, you can't, you can't trust God because you don't believe he can heal you. Because you don't have that knowledge of him. Right? And, and, and I'll, I'll add that again. Many people, all the names of God in the Bible were given by him, by mortal men like you and me, based on their encounter and their knowledge of him. Now, Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides what I cannot provide. You can wake him up 12 midnight. He knows that aspect of God so well and is confident about that. Gideon, know him as Jehovah Shalom, the one who covers my deep insecurity. He knows that, that knowledge of God. Even a Haggai, Sarah's servant, had the knowledge of God, and she called him Jehovah Roy, the one who sees me. Based on their relationship and their encounter with God, they came to know an aspect of the Father. This is the knowledge the Bible is talking about. Do you spend time enough with God to know Him? Do you know Him? Because if you don't know Him, you can't grow in your faith and you can't walk with Him with confidence and you can't trust Him. So this is very, very important. So He said, add to your knowledge... The next thing he said, what? Add to your knowledge, self-control. Paul speaking to us in, in, in the scripture, he said, knowledge puffs up. Let me tell you a story. When I got saved and when I went to the Bible college, the first thing that came to me after, when I started reading Paul's letter, this is me because I'm very, very inquisitive and I ask questions a lot. And in my mind, when I started reading all the letters of Paul, what came to my mind was this. I said, this man is arrogant. Honestly. You know, the way he writes. But the older I get in the faith, and I began to understand where he was coming from. He had so much knowledge, and he was so balanced. He knew God so much. You remember how he was praying in Philippians chapter 3? He said that I may know him. And he really got to know him. So he was speaking from a place of knowledge, but that knowledge, he had control. He didn't become arrogant and boastful or proud about it. So that self-control is the ability to say, and that is one aspect of self-control. And the second one is this. The self is the ability to say to oneself, especially in relation to personal ones and emotional desire, without any external pressure. Now, what do I mean by that? To be able to say no to yourself without any external uh, pressure. I used to say this to my children. I said, listen, if you don't learn to say no to you, you can't say no to your friends. Self-control. You have to learn to say no to yourself. That is to say, if this is alcohol, I don't need to hide to drink it. I should be able to say, no, I don't have to drink this. I'm using this as an example now. 
you must learn to say the reason why people fall to peer pressure is because they have not mastered the art of saying no. Self-discipline, self-control. The fact that I want it does not mean I should have it. That is one aspect of the divine nature. The ability to keep your body under control. Not out of fear, but out of love. Not out of terror, but out of love. To say, uh, without feeling that you are losing or missing anything. This is very, very important. Self-control. Because you cannot walk successfully with God in these last days if you don't have self-control. If whatever you want, you want to get, you're going to be in trouble. Like I was telling uh, our church on Sunday, I went into Edmonton and I saw people queuing up at all these uh, uh, boutiques and fashion store, lining up to buy sneakers and to buy clothes. And I said, why would you do that? It's not that you are naked. Why would you be so desperate? Why would, the fact, and I told my boys, and there was one particular store that we go to every now and then, <laughs> a Tommy uh, store, and my boys, let's go there. When we drove there and there were queues, and I said, no. I said, we are not that desperate to go and wait, stand in the queue to go in and the, because it's on sale. The fact that it's on sale does not mean that you should get it, right? Learning to have self-control over little things is important. So the Bible, and then let me give you another example from the Bible. You remember in Genesis 39, uh, the story of Joseph, when uh, his master's wife wanted to lure him into committing adultery with her. What did uh, Joseph say? Genesis 39 verse 9 said, It is no greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How can I do this wickedness and sin against God? You see, Joseph had self-control, and he wasn't afraid of the master. He was more afraid of God. Not afraid because of his love for God. He loved God so much that he's not willing to compromise. So he had self-control. Do you have self-control over that little lust in you right now? Do you have control over that desire you know is destroying your home? And I know that some of us, alcohol is not going to take you to hell, but it's destroying your marriage. It's destroying your health. Can you say no to that? You are in a relationship you know you're not supposed to be in right now. Do you have self-control? Can you say enough? The fact that my body wants to do this. Must you give your body everything the body wants? This is self-control. And to be a true child of God in these last days, we need to have that nature. You know? And to self-control, the Bible says perseverance. Perseverance is be the ability to continue to do the right thing in spite of opposition, difficulty, discouragement, to keep moving and pushing forward, even if it means doing it alone. Are you able to do that? Can you persevere? Can you endure for a little bit? How many times have we prayed? and ask God for something, and it doesn't come at the right time we expect it, and we just give up and quit. Right? Things are hard right now. How many of us are willing to stand for truth and righteousness while everybody else is going the wrong way? When everybody is laughing at you for believing in God, for trusting, and, uh, and now the Bible says we are in the last days. And everybody's laughing at you and say, oh, nothing is happening. Are you going to change your conviction and go with the crowd? Or are you willing to stand alone? Inspired. Even if you're the only one standing in your community for the truth. Even if you're the only one standing for the truth in your church. Yeah, I can say church because there are churches these days that again, we have to find another name for them. 
Are we willing to stand for truth and righteousness? Are we willing to say, I will say yes? Are we willing to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Even under the threat of death, I will say we will not bow to the gods of this age. Do we have such perseverance? Huh? Like Moses, the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 27, he said, by faith Moses forsook the pleasures of Egypt. <laughs> huh? Write Hebrew chapter 11, verse 27 down in your hand out there. And he said, by faith Abraham, uh, uh, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. I love that scripture. Because he could see him that was invincible. This is what faith is all about. Faith is not just to get a new car or brand new home or just get healed physically. It's part of that. But the real reason why we have faith is to be able to be like the Jesus that we have not yet seen. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe but have not yet seen. Moses continued strong because he could see him that was invincible. He saw the invincible Jesus. Yes, Hebrew eleven twenty seven. Thank you, ATM. He saw him that was invincible. Have you had a do you have a relationship with God that you can see God in the midst of your storm right now? Can you see him that is invincible? Even in this visible world? And refuse to be distracted? It is the ability to see the invincible God in this visible world, in this chaotic world, that gives you the boldness and the tenacity to keep on pushing while everyone else is laughing at you. Can you imagine how people were laughing at Moses? How can you leave that palace? How can you leave this, this is the most powerful man on earth at that time? How can you forsake all that for the unknown? Going into the wilderness. You don't even know what the future holds. Here you have a guarantee. And this is what the world is telling you, child of God. Yeah? You keep talking about heaven. Who has been to heaven and comes to tell you? Now you can enjoy the world here. Amen. That's true. But can you trust him? This is it. To trust him even when you can't see nothing. Moses step out of Egypt into the wilderness without nothing inside. All he saw were the promises of God, of eternity. Can you see that? Are you able to step out and say no to the temptations of this world and refuse to compromise? Refuse to compromise your faith and your integrity? Refuse to say, no, I'm not going to fall into that relationship anymore. I'm not going to make that compromise. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I would rather suffer. I would rather lose my job. Can we do that? Moses did that and stepped up. And you know, you know the end of the story. This is what God is calling us to. Uh, it is in that perseverance that godliness becomes the next thing. You say, you say godliness is showing the character trait of a child of God at all times and in every circumstances. You see how the Holy Spirit built it up. Everything comes in sequence. And for you to have one, you have to start with the other. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Keep your eyes on God. Keep keeping your eyes on the Lord, my sister. And that storm is going to come to pass in the name of Jesus. You know, and this is what it's all about. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. Do not, he will not leave you nor forsake you. It may look like God has left you. And that is the lie of the devil. God, he say he has ears and he can hear. He say his hands are not too short to save. He will never leave us nor forsake us. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to keep your, your godly character. I want you to keep trusting in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And I want to encourage you tonight that whatever you are going through, whatever your situation is right now, you may be at a breaking point, but keep on keeping on. Don't break down, don't give up, don't quit. 
God is, the, the story is not going to end in defeat for the child of God. I want you to know that, that your story will not end in defeat. The Bible says, he that put his trust in the Lord will never be put to shame and neither will he be disappointed. Our God is a merciful God and is a faithful God. And he knows what you are going through. He understands that you need a new job. He understands that your family needs to be restored. He understands. And God is saying, don't quit. Don't give up. For many of us tonight, as we wrap this thing up, I want to encourage you. Make every effort <clears throat> to add to your faith. And keep on keeping up. No matter what you're going through right now. You may be feeling a sense of betrayal. Feeling all alone. Like nobody understands. Listen, nobody can understand what you're going through. They are not meant to understand you. And this is for somebody here right now. You keep saying nobody understands me. Nobody understands what I'm going through. They are not meant to understand you. You know why? Because they are not built to solve your problem. Okay? This is for you. I don't know who you are. They don't understand you because they are not meant to understand you because they don't have the answer to that question in the altar of your heart. <clears throat> you are going through a dark time. There's a storm raging like our sister wrote here right now. <clears throat> you may be going through... And I want to talk to somebody also tonight as we pray. Something just came up. An old wound has just been brought to the surface. <coughs> Excuse me. You had an encounter, an experience that has brought back something that you almost forgot. You've almost, you've, you've dealt with it. You thought you've dealt with it. You thought you've gotten over it. Suddenly something happened not too long ago and suddenly that old memory is back like it's yesterday. <coughs> but I'm telling you, God is saying to tell you, I have not forgotten you. You are not forsaken. You are not abandoned. I, the reason why you feel helpless and you feel alone right now Excuse me. It's not an indictment against you. You know, let me tell you something as we pray. The story of Moses, and this is what the Holy Spirit just brought to my mind right now. Moses is the only man, apart from Elijah that was taken up to heaven, Moses was buried by the angels of the Lord, not by a human being. Nobody knew where Moses' grave is till date until tomorrow. <clears throat> you know what God is saying through that to tell you? You see, the thing is that if people, if mortal men solve your problem, if men bury your problem for you, they will know where the grave is. They can always refer to it. Oh, if not for what I did for you yesterday, you wouldn't be here today. So God deliberately is deliberately peeling people off you, making you feel all alone because he wants to get your attention and he wants to deal with this situation by himself and him alone. He wants to go through this with you so that you will come out on the other side victorious. And you can say, if not for God that has been on my side, where would I have been? That your victory and your songs of victory will be God and God alone. No mortal man born of a woman would take credit for the next move of God in your life. This is why, child of God, it is important for you to go back to your closet and begin to peel off every weight of sin that is hanging on you. Because God is about to turn things around. Your best days you haven't seen yet. I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to give up now. 
God has not forgotten you. The Lord is watching over you and he will perfect everything that concerns you. The Bible says he that will come, will come and not tarry. He is a faithful God and he loves you with an everlasting love. And so he wants you to now begin to imbibe, make focus on building your Christian work with him and leave the little details for him to handle. You know what the Bible says? Jesus says what? Seek first the kingdom of God. This is what we're talking about. And his righteousness, this is what we're talking about. This is what Peter is trying to say to us again. And every other thing will be added unto you. Listen, focus on Jesus. Focus on your walk with him and watch him fix that marriage. Watch him fix that relationship and watch him heal that to your body and watch him bring that son back home and watch him bring that daughter back to you and watch him turn things around and watch him open that door that you've been knocking on for years and watch him turn things around like never before. Take your eyes off the problem and fix your eyes on Jesus. Child of God, Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And if you keep looking on Jesus, all these other things, you will not even realize that they've been solved and dealt with. He will fix it. I guarantee you today, in the name of Jesus, that as you turn your face to, towards Jesus and your back on this problem, you'll begin to see how God will begin to sort them out for you. God bless you, child of God. And... Um, we, uh, I, I don't know if we should be closing this, the Bible study for the summertime or do we continue uh, to, again, if you want us to continue for the rest of the month of June, I want you to write it in the comment section. If I get about 10 people to, who want us to continue, then we can continue doing this uh, Bible study uh, every Wednesday, you know. So we'll begin to talk and begin to pray together. And uh, to God willing, the Holy Spirit will continue to show us the best way to go. Amen. All right. Uh, so tonight, uh, God is a faithful God. I want you all to be encouraged with what is going on in the world. Our God is in control. Give God all your worries. And we will continue to do this. And uh, the grace of God, the mercy of God. So we will continue again next Wednesday. So we will just, uh, so that way we are not rushing it. So the next Wednesday we will continue with our brotherly kindness, love. And, and then we cannot can wrap it up and begin to go into other things. Amen. So let us pray. We're going to pray for John. Uh, Oswald, uh, he, he lost his dad, and we're going to pray again for Sister Melody, and we're going to pray for everyone that is going through a storm of any kind right now. Amen. So we will continue by the grace of God. So let us pray. I want you, uh, even while you're still online, I want you to just begin to pray. Let us pray for John. Uh, uh, John, uh, he, he lost his dad, and pray for Sister Melody. She says she's going to a storm. And let us pray there's somebody there also tonight that you know, there's a memory that has come up that is just creating, you know, some a, a, a kind of trauma in your spirit right now. And we're going to be praying for you. I don't know who you are, but I believe the Holy Spirit knows you. And I'm just going to pray and I just let the Holy Spirit lead. Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now. We lift up our brother to you and his family. Lord, you say we should mourn with them that mourn. We say, and so we mourn with him. We grieve with him. But we grieve not with hopelessness. We grieve with hope. Father, we just pray, Father God, that your spirit will just comfort them. We pray, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit and your angels to flap their wings of healing and comfort upon John and his family in the name of Jesus. Lord, as they go through this period of pain and mourning, Father God, 
God that the comfort of the Holy Spirit will be their portion in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father God, for as many, O oh God, that are going through any form of storm, we use our sister Melody as a point of contact. As I pray here with my family, with Esther, my wife, we agree. The Bible says, peace be still. I take authority and dominion in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every storm that is raging against you and your family right now. I calm that storm in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Bible says we rebuke you, we overcome you by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. And I command every spirit that is harassing Melody and her family, loose her and let her go right now in the name of Jesus. I restore order into every situation, every chaotic situation in your family, be it medical, be it emotional, be it financial. We rebuke the hand of the enemy from your home. From tonight, we command, let there be a turnaround in Jesus' mighty name. For every need that is represented in this Bible study tonight, I pray for Brother Terry and I pray for an open door that no man can shout in the name of Jesus. I pray for Sister Brenda and I pray for their business in the name of Jesus. And I pray for Bob Bogador and I pray for his father and I rebuke the hand of the enemy. I pray for Sister Lorna. I pray for Yana. Lord, everyone, the blessedness, everyone online tonight, I'll lift you up to the throne of grace and I pray for the supernatural move of the Holy Ghost in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray that God's mercy will prevail over every form of judgment in your life in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall give you that which you do not deserve. Let mercy prevail over judgment. Every, listen to me, child of God, I stand in the name of Jesus. Every embargo in your life is lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Every form of stagnation in your marriage, in your relationship, in your spirit man, I lift that embargo in the name of Jesus. I open the heavens over you and your family in the name of Jesus. That thing that keeps you awake all night, tonight will bring that issue to an end. I lift your case to the throne of heaven and I break down that solution that you need in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, rebuke the enemy from your home in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has not planted in your body that is growing, creating discomfort, the Bible says any tree that the Father has not planted shall be uprooted. I uproot any form of sickness, every abnormal growth in your kidney, in your liver, in your tummy, in the name of Jesus. I speak to your back, loose in the name of Jesus. I speak to that anxiousness and anxiety in the name of Jesus. Receive the peace of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Whoever the Son has set free is free indeed. And in the name of Jesus, you are free from every form of oppression, every nightmare, every disturbance, every crisis. That fear be gone in the name of Jesus. You, you will get what you deserve. The Lord shall give you better than what you deserve right now in the name of Jesus. Do not be afraid. You will not be stranded. You will not need to beg before you eat in the name of Jesus. That sickness will not kill you in the name of Jesus. You are afraid. You are beginning to feel the same way your father, your grandfather, or uncle felt. The enemy is saying the same thing that happened to them is about to happen to you. Right now, I rebuke that lie in the name of Jesus. You will not die like them in the name of Jesus. You will not be a victim like them in the name of Jesus. Whatever your father, your grandfather was victim of, today in the name of Jesus, you shall escape like 
like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Every generational trap that the enemy has set for you, today I break the cord of the enemy over you and your family. Receive the grace for a new beginning. Receive the divine nature of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Be it's well with you, child of God. <clears throat> the Lord is the strength of your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. What church has started, uh, we, we can take at least uh, up to uh, 45, 50 people spacing. So you are welcome. If you're in Grand Cash, <clears throat> you can come to church on Sunday now. The band has been lifted. And then uh, we will continue with the Bible study on Wednesday, God willing. And if you have a private prayer, prayer request, just send them to me. And early hours of this uh, tomorrow morning, God willing, I'll be praying like I always do. And uh, we'll be lifting you up and agreeing with you in prayer. Child of God, this is our season. Lord God, is a shift happening and we are not going to give up. This is our season. Listen to me as we go now. This is our season. Don't be distracted with all what the enemy is doing. This our season, something is about to break through. If you are in Cornerstone, go back and listen to December and January messages. There's a shift happening and I'm just riding the wind. I'm riding the wave. I'm riding the storm. And I know that we are going to land into a glory. It's going to end well. That is all I can say to you. It will end well to the glory of God. So be encouraged. Keep believing. Keep trusting. And the Lord bless you and keep you. See you on Sunday or see you next week, Wednesday. Whichever when or if the Lord comes before then, I hope to see you all in heaven. God bless you and have a blessed evening. Amen.